We're back. Welcome back, you guys, for another episode of That's My Personal Business. We are talking all things love. We're talking all about falling in love with our business, with our clients, selling in a really ethical and life-giving way. We are talking about all of that this month and because it's Valentine's Day. Duh. Not anymore, I guess. I guess that's over, but it's a really chaotic start to the podcast episode. But Valentine's is over, but we're continuing on our journey of love, both with ourselves and our businesses and our clients. And I'm so excited to have you here because something big has happened, you guys. Our new course is out, How to Become an Online Educator. And oh my God, like I have so many thoughts on this course coming out. It is a step-by-step guide for becoming an online educator and beginning your passive income journey. And it is something I am so passionate about because not only has passive income and online education brought in like half a million dollars for me over the last couple of years of my business, but it has completely allowed me to live the life of my dreams. And I don't just mean that in a really vague way. Um, I've told this story before, but I think it's important to tell it again. But when I first started in my passive income journey, it was, I really started seriously doing it when I released my artificial lighting course back in October, 2019. And October, 2019 is also when I decided to get a divorce. And that passive income, that online launch earned me 40K in one month. And it was still to this day, like the biggest launch we've ever had. And I earned all of this money that I couldn't, I couldn't use for a couple months because I pay myself like a monthly wage and then quarterly bonuses. And so I couldn't pay myself until the beginning of the year after my divorce had gone through anyway. And so I, I got all of this money into my bank account as I was like trying to sell my home, move across the country and like process my divorce, pay for therapy, pay for EMDR. Like there were so many things going wrong in my life that I only was able to fix and sort through because of the money of that launch. And it makes me like so emotional to think about how much you guys have given me and trusted me with your businesses. And I hope you know how much that has impacted my life. Like the only reason I am here and I am the way that I am and I am the human that I am and I'm living the life that I am is because of passive income and online education. Like if I had not launched those courses and that that artificial light course specifically, I wouldn't be here. I'd probably still be living in Utah. I'd probably would have had to stay there. And that would have been so detrimental, one, to the life that I have now, but two, to my mental health and like... There's just so many layers to it. So I, one, want to say thank you. And two, I just wanted to share a little bit more on the personal side, like why I'm so passionate about passive income and online education, because it has truly changed the way that my life operates. And it's one of the things that I get the biggest and most questions on is like how to get started, what that looks like, how do you even build it? What tools do you use? How do you sell it? How do you build funnels? Like there's so much to it and it does take a lot of time. I want to be clear, I've been doing it for several years now and it's not an immediate solution. It's not like you launch one product and it's a 100K launch. Sometimes that happens, but not all the time. But it's this continual journey and it's really beautiful and it can completely change your life if you really take it seriously. And so I knew I knew I wanted to build a course on it. And um, I actually wanted to build this course a couple of years ago because I started getting a lot of questions on it. And I had a mentor at the time that was not supportive of me launching it. Um, this is the same mentor I had that like scammed me out of $20,000 <laughs> and offered me a lot of drugs and did drugs in front of me. It was a really traumatizing experience, but literally they told me not to do this course. And that has kept me from doing it for years. And so I've been working on this course like slowly but surely for so long and it's finally here and it's finally time for it to be released. And I'm just like so excited for it to get into the hands of those that need it and those that are thinking about bringing on passive income that are thinking about starting their online education journey. It is a 
more podcast-esque course. It's more audio files than it is video mixed with a nearly 90 page workbook. And the workbook is the meat of the course. It is a step-by-step -step guide on the things that you need to process, come up with journal prompts, um, chat GBT prompts, checklists. Like it is everything that you need to do and know in order to start building online education. And I'm I'm just really, really excited about it. And even though it is at a price point that I usually don't offer a year-long payment plan on, we are doing a year-long payment plan on it so that there's like literally no reason that you can't get in on it. And yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited for you guys to dive into it. It's, I know this is a longer intro pitching for a course, but it's out, it's live, my baby. And I'm just so excited. And so the link will be linked for you below in the show notes. You can get started for as little as I want to say $55. Um, and so there's no reason to not get in on it. So I'm so excited for everyone to start diving into it. We also have a Discord channel so that everyone can help each other and they can almost have access to mini mentoring sessions with me um, through the Discord channel so that we can all help you build your online education, answer your questions, help you brainstorm, whatever it may be. It's going to be such a beautiful community and course. So I'm just, I'm so excited about it. And so I'll link that for you below. So that's number one. <laughs> that's like the first thing that's new and it's a big thing that's new. And what else is new? I'm like, that's really what I've been working on for like months and months and months. It's been a long long time since we've come out with new education like it's been since last year when we did twin flames and so i'm just like really giddy to have it out for you guys i am currently prepping for iceland by the time this comes out i will be on my way home from iceland so i'm so excited to share all of that with you guys i have a really big goal to like clock out as much as I can during that time. I really want to be able to just like stay present in Iceland and enjoy my time and kind of let my brain refresh like creation wise since there's been so much going into this course. And other than that, I've been feeling a little just a little creatively stumped. It's why I went through Twin Flames myself. I'm probably going to go through Calling All Brands again, um, just so that I can like really get my brain where I want it to be and feel more connected to my business again. So that's a little bit about what's going on over here. And I'm so excited because today on long the theme of loving our business, loving selling, loving our clients, we are talking about building and nurturing client relationships and the importance of building long-term relationships with our clients and peers in the creative industry because it is so important. It's something I did not take seriously enough, I don't think, in the beginning of my career. Um, I know I've been upfront with you guys, but I'll I always get nervous about repeating things on the podcast, but so many of you are new slash probably don't care if you hear it again. So I need to stop being weird about like, I might've said this once before, like I'm like, there's hundreds of podcast episodes. It's probably been a minute if you have heard it and I don't want new people to not hear it. But when I first started my business, I was married. I was in a really toxic marriage where my business was just kind of like one, my entire life. It's all I did. And two, it's kind of like my lifeline. Like it's kind of the only thing I had. And um, because of that though, and because of where I was at personally, I feel like I wasn't really able to show up in the way that I am now. I wasn't able to build personal relationships in the way that I do now. I was so closed off. I was worried people would get to know me too much and find out what was going on in my personal life because I was so embarrassed about the state of my marriage. Um, and so all of this is to say like I wasn't as good at nurturing client and peer and like vendor relationships because I was just like, a shell of a human being just operating as best as I could. So this is going to be a podcast episode about networking, engaging ongoing past like relationships with past clients, the pillars of client relationships and what that should look like and what we should be focusing on so that you can really make that a priority for your business this year. It's one of the most powerful, not only here's the thing about networking and building beautiful client relationships is they're twofold. One, they're great for your business, right? Like the, it is amazing for your business to have these relationships and to like work on them actively and have them be fruitful and ongoing. It's a powerful form of networking and marketing. Um, but two, it also just makes your life more personally enjoyable. When you are working with people who feel like friends, it's going to be a more enjoyable business for you. And when you're working along, whether it's your clients or fellow vendors and they feel like friends like that is such a beautiful way of operating your business in comparison to just like one and done not keeping up with people not getting to know people at all life is so short and humans are so beautiful and we as 
creatives or wedding vendors or however you however you have found yourself in this podcast world of mine um we have like such a beautiful opportunity to get to know other human beings and to relate to them and to build beautiful lasting relationships with them that give us life and give us energy and give us fulfillment in our business and that is not something that i want you to look past um it's something that i if you're feeling resistance to what i'm saying i want you to question why because i too am an introvert it can't just be that you're an introvert um i promise even if you are an introvert having beautiful relationships with the people that you work with is going to be so much more rewarding than not and so i challenge you to do some introspection on why you're feeling resistance to this thing if that's coming up for you and if it's not coming up for you perfect great you're one step in already let's talk about the top pillars of client relationships and there are nine Number one is trust. Shocker. The foundation of any strong client relationship, vendor relationship, relationship in general is trust and it's earned through consistent, reliable, and honest behavior. And really the way that you are going to communicate that you are a trustful and trust deserving person is your brand. That's who you are. It's what you do. It's the way that you do things. Communicating what your brand is and the way that it shows up in your business is how you're going to build trust. If you do not yet have a personal, transparent, genuine brand face to your business, what are you doing? <laughs> you must be new here. Please go listen to a branding episode. But like seriously, if you're not building a personal brand, I promise you that is one of the biggest reasons you're not seeing the results that you want to see in your business. That is how you build trust. That is how you build trust with your ideal clients. That is how you get to know your ideal clients. That is truly the foundation of everything. So build a personal, transparent, honest, value-driven brand because that is how you're going to build trust with your audience. Number two is communication. Clear, open, and two-way communication is crucial. It not only it not only involves how you convey your message, but also how effectively you listen to your clients' needs, feedback, writing, right? Answer everything. Whether that is client emails, what that whether that is text and you just need to direct them to email, that's a topic for another day because I'm not a text girly, but like always answer everyone and including on social media, you should be answering all DMs, you should be answering all comments, you should really be building this two-way relationship with the people that you expect to show up for your business. You cannot expect people to show up for your business more than you show up for your business and your clients. This is not a one-way street, it is a two-way street and we have to be showing up through our communication, through our consistency, and through our everything, our messaging. Like this is your opportunity to build genuine relationships with people and that is built through communication. Okay, number three is understanding, knowing your client's needs, goals, and challenges. This requires thorough research, attentive listening, and you love to hear it, empathy. Yes, this is a great time for people that love to tell you you're an empath, but this is the time that you're going to be an empath, right? We need to be understanding of our audience. And a great way to do this is to ask what they need, whether through polls, whether through talking to friends and family, whether that's talking to current clients and past clients, whether that's getting feedback from past clients on how you could have made their experience better, what could have been improved and being okay with getting those answers. But you need to have an understanding of what the client process is like with you, what the pre-client process is like with you, and how you can better that for your future clients. Number four is value and quality, providing high quality services and products that deliver real value to your clients. The biggest thing that I can say on this is like, do it well or do not do it at all. I am so honest with you guys in the fact that like there are tons of subjects that I could teach on and I just like absolutely will not because I'm not passionate about them. And if I'm not passionate about them, I'm not going to teach them well. If you are going to do something, do it well or don't do it at all. That might be a sign that you should not be doing it at all. If the passion is not there, scrap it, move on to the next thing. Every time you put out something that is not valuable or quality, you are just risking that bond with your audience and that trust that you've built. And so it is better to just not do it at all. 
Number five is consistency, being consistent in your quality of service, communication, and overall experience you provide. Don't be afraid to also repurpose is something that I wrote down on my notes for this section because I think like, don't be afraid to automate. Don't be afraid to repurpose. Don't be afraid to streamline the things that you need to do in order to be consistent with your, you know, quality of service, communication, and overall experience. Like, just because you want to stay consistent doesn't mean that you have to be having your fingers on everything all of the time. You have the ability to repurpose. You have the ability to automate. You have the ability to systemize. And you should be doing those things because then it allows you to have more touch points with your clients, to serve them better, to provide better communication, to provide better value, to really build that trust without you having to actively move the needle on every single client yourself. Um, personalization, tailoring your approach to meet the specific needs and preferences of each client. I cannot stress this enough. If you are offering any sort of one-on-one -on -one offering, it should be personal. If you are ever face to face with a person, it should be personal. It's one of the reasons I don't do group coaching, like actual masterminds, is because I've been in one before and the lack of one on one personalization felt like I made, just flushed my money down the drain. Like if someone is paying you high ticket pricing and they are doing a personal offering with you, whether that is a service, whether that is coaching, consulting, it should be personalized to them and their needs right? That's like taking, it's like if you had a literal blueprint shot list that you worked through on a wedding day, that would be so impersonal and not helpful to the client at all. So make sure that it is personal for every client that you are having a one-on-one -on -one experience with. Respect. Showing respect for your client's times, opinions, and business. Let's talk about this because this is also something that has changed a lot as I've gotten older, as I've gotten out of my marriage, as I've gotten into a better place mentally, I have become more of a compromiser because people have different opinions on different things and you can always meet in the middle or you should at least try. It doesn't mean people are always going to take it. Um, I will get vulnerable and I will share a recent example. Last year, I had a coaching client and it, it was the hardest coaching client I've ever had in my life. They would not implement anything I said, anything. I couldn't have a conversation with them without them crying about how stressed they were about their life and their business, but they also wouldn't take action on anything. And it was just like, I had no idea what I needed to do. I felt like I needed to be a therapist or a life coach, which I'm neither. And it was just like, it was truly one of the most stressful experiences of my life. I cried so much. <laughs> like I cried over it probably once a week um, because it was just so stressful and it was such a long-term coaching client that I like didn't know what to do. Um, they one day came to me and basically were like, I'm done. I want to quit the coaching. I can't do it. I want a full refund or I want a refund. And I was like, well, we're not doing that. Um, but I'm happy to do like, because I've already fulfilled the contract. Like I had gone so above and beyond for them, done so many extra calls, invited them to workshops, given them free tickets. Um, like I had already gone above the coaching contracted price and timing. And I was like, okay, what can we do here? Like I was very honest with them. And this is where I think it's so important to like meet in the middle and remember that you're talking to a human being. I was like, I'm going to be so real with you. I have no idea what to do you know, we've, we've tried this, we've tried this, we've tried this, we've tried this. I've tried talking to you in this way, this way, this way, and this way we've done in-person things. We've done online things. We've done podcasting things. We've done audio. We've done video. We've done everything. Like, I don't know what to do. What can we do? And I just tried to engage in like a really honest conversation with them on like, what can be done? Like, what can this look like? Cause I don't, I don't know. Like I, I'm going to be honest with you. I've tried everything I can. What can we do? Let's brainstorm together. Um, and in the end they were like, I actually like, yeah, you're right. I <laughs> haven't been the greatest student. Um, I'm not willing to implement anything you say. So if you're not willing to refund me, I'm going to quit. And I was like, okay. And it was devastating. Like it haunts me still. They recently also like posted on Instagram, like bashing me which was really, really fun. Um, and the first time that's ever happened to me in my career, like it was just someone so unwilling to have a conversation with me um, and like take any accountability, even though like it was just such a weird situation. I like me, my team, none of us had any idea what to do. It was such a nightmare. Um, but like 
it was so important to me that even though that conversation didn't go the way I wanted, that I tried as much as possible to find a solution and meet in the middle, even though I felt like they were completely in the wrong. Like in my head, they were completely in the wrong. Um, still to this day, I'm like, I try every time I have a nightmare client experience, I try to be like, what did I do wrong? Like, what could I have done better? So I don't do it next time. And usually the answer is like set expectations more properly in the beginning. Like I should have done a better job at setting expectations. This person I had like 30 conversations with before they signed up being like, this program's really hard. It takes a lot of action. Are you ready for that? Like I set expectations so realistically with them. Um, so I don't really know. <laughs> I'm still unsure of what I could have done differently. And if they ever want to tell me what I could have done differently, I would love to know. Um, but it's so important important, even when you have nightmare clients, that you meet in the middle. You meet in the middle, you guys. Seriously. There are going to be situations like the one I just painted where sometimes there's not going to be a solution. And that sucks. And it really does just suck. And sometimes it's better to just cut ties and call it good. But you should try out of respect for your clients and the relationship that you've built to try to meet in the middle. Um, I know that's a little different than saying like, I know we started with like show respect for your client's time, opinions and business, but like you guys know, be on time to your meetings. Don't flake on them. Don't be late to weddings, things like that. But I want to really stress the like show respect to your clients by having conversations with them, even when things get tough. Okay. Long, long tangent there. Now let's talk about responsiveness. Um, being prompt in response to queries, concerns, or feedback. I think another thing that's really important with this, because I have met people that respond to emails in like five seconds. I absolutely do not. I will never be that person. I don't have my email notifications on my phone. I check my email like every other day. I answer them every other day. I answer Marco Polo's every other day. And the reason if not every couple days, the reason I am able to do that is because I have set expectations properly. There is nothing you can do wrong as long as you set the expectation for it properly. So when it comes to your client communication, what that's going to look like, your emails, the way that you navigate texts or DMs or whatever it may be, set expectations properly. My clients know, they know from the minute they email me because I always have an automatic responder on that says it's going to take up to 72 hours to get back to you because we have a life outside our screens. They know from the minute they email me that it's going to be a minute because I have a life outside my screen. And that sets the expectation properly of like, hey, this is what it's going to be like for the rest of your process. When they sign up for coaching, they will literally like initial next to things saying like, you're not going to text me. You're not going to call me. You're only going to email and Marco Polo me. This is how often I'm going to respond. This is the way it is. And if you don't want to deal with that, that's totally fine. But this is what works best for me, for me to be the best human and business owner I can be this is how it's going to be. So instead of putting this expectation on yourself to respond to everything in five seconds, instead sit down and be like, what's realistic and what would feel good to me? And how can I set those expectations properly? Um, okay. Long-term focus. Viewing client relationships as long-term partnerships rather than these one-off transactions. You guys have all heard the saying that it's like, 10 times more expensive to sign a new client than it is to keep a client going. Um, think to yourself, how can I serve my clients long-term? How can I reach out to them consistently? How can I serve them in different phases of their life? How can I serve them through different offerings? Maybe that's a product ladder. We talk about that a lot in the education course that just came out. I was so excited. Um, but think to yourself, like, how can I serve them long-term? How can I keep them in my funnel? And those, you guys, are the top pillars of client relationships and how you can work on them to better your business and better your marketing and better your quality of relationships with the people that you surround yourself with, whether that's through networking or your actual clients. So do some journaling on this when you're out of the car, out of the gym, wherever you listen to the podcast, sit down, go through each of these nine pillars, brainstorm how you can do better on them and take action today. Even if that's just answering DMs, which I need to do after this because it takes a really long time. Um, but I love you guys. I mean it. Thank you for tuning in. If you found this episode helpful, don't forget to subscribe. Leave us a review, pretty please. And come join us for our new online course, How to Become an Online Educator. And I will see you guys next week.